Welcome. Listen, I'm sitting here with Dave Ammerman here. I got Jesse K taking your questions. We're doing live. What's it worth? Now, when I see all of you out there, the first question you ask me before how you're feeling, you don't even say hello. I've got this item that my uncle left, or I got this, I got that. You know who you are. And I'm blessed, happy, grateful that you even come over to me to begin with. But here's your chance. If you got a question, you have something that you want to know what it's worth, I want you to, right now, this is an interactive little conversation here. Yes, you're going to have to do something. If you plan on doing nothing and sit back, watch, because there's going to be some very cool stuff we're going to talk about and actually tell people what we think they have and what it's worth. Because collecting is cool and collecting is in. And right now, everybody's got something that their grandfather or they found or their dad left them or their mom put aside or whatever it is. And then all you closet collectors, yeah, the ones that don't tell anybody you have all this stuff. Yeah, you know who you are. Well, if you want and you have a question, we're here to help you. We're going to give you a little value. Dave Ironman's our crack expert. You know, he does appraisals, and we're also helping you sell your stuff. If you have things you want to sell, Dave oversees the auction platform on Steiner Sports, so we're constantly selling your collections and selling stuff. If somebody's left for you or, God forbid, if somebody's passed away, we're here to help. So this is the time when you interact. Click below, take us a picture of something you have or tell us what you have, and we'll get you either on the phone or we'll answer you as many as we can and tell you a little bit about what you have and what it's worth. Uh, ben, are we set up on the phones to do this? or? Yeah. So we may take some calls. I mean, I've done this on ESPN. I've done this on a whole bunch of other radio shows. And I figure, you know, so let's do it here live. Right, Dave? Yeah. All right. So email in your questions, and, and Jesse's going to uh, rattle through all those. Thanks for joining us on a Thursday. I feel like it's like summertime in New York right now. It's like 35, 40 degrees. I feel like it's like, you know, I'm ready to put my bathing suit on, man. It's like that, that zero-degree stuff, really, that's – it's, I mean, it's hard. It's, we got so, some. So all of a sudden, it's feeling like really nice out. Anyway, before we get to the calls, I always have a couple little things to discuss. So let's just go over one or two things you brought up here, Dave, sure. just for the fun of it. Like, these are things sure. on the auction now? Um, these or are, are going to be on the auction. Like, what the hell is this? This is just some things I found that you would probably find lying around wow. your house. But there's there's definitely some value. How here. old is this you thing? Now, you know, Yogi Berra was a spokesman for you who. And, you know, we brought him back in the 90s to be a spokesman for you who And then we brought Rizzuto back. And he used to actually sell you and, and help distributors actually put this in locations. And there's still you who in that. And I love that there's still you in. You got Mel. Oh, no, no, no. no that's not that. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. Wow, this uh, is yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a late 90s. This has got, yeah, this has got to be an old bottle. Yeah. This is cool. So how much something like this work? So condition, believe it or not, there is different levels of these you who cans. They are out there. This one here has got some rust, but it still has the you who in it. This one here is about a hundred dollar can, but I've seen them really sharp, where the top's still silver, obviously packaged away. Not this you oxidized. need a, a can opener to get in. Yeah, it looks like. yeah. I love a yoo-hoo in a bottle, though. I'm not gonna lie. Nothing like a cold, ice cold you. You know, skin milk, so it's not that fattening. Yeah. And oh, it's delicious. Ice cold in the bottle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. So, anyway, about a hundred dollars. Yeah, now, could somebody bid on this, or is this not really uh, on auction yet? Yes. No. This one. This one's going to be live here in a few That's weeks cool. in a weekly auction. That's just, cool. Just something to sprinkle in uh, every week. We have different things like that. This one. All right. Here yeah, we are. Yeah. Now, this, we're not getting controversial here. <laughs> I think into going down uh, memory lane here with this guy. But That's anyway, mid, the Hulk. Mid 1980s Hulk uh, Hogan in the box. Um, Action figure, one of the first. Does it help that it's in the box? It does. This figure not in the box is probably a twenty-five dollar figure. So. And what is it now? In the box, it's about one hundred and fifty dollars, and it probably has a price tag of what, of five dollars on there or something like that. When it was Six dollars yeah. and ninety-seven cents. So this best. is worth. This will sell. It's on the auction. If you're a big wrestling fan, this is a great item to bid on. How much? It's about one hundred and fifty dollars on that one. We're doing a what's it worth here. That was Hulk Hogan action figurine. This is the point where you interact. Send us your what you have, how you got it. We'll try to get you on the phone lines. We'll answer your questions. Jesse K's right here. Going to start rattling off some of your things. One more before we get to the, your uh, um, your inquiries about what you have. Because I never had a lunchbox. I never really took lunch to school. So when I see this, I get a little teary-eyed about it because a lot of my friends had their little lunchboxes, cool yeah. and I never had that. I mean, not to put it right through that, but <laughs> this is, looks pretty cool. It's a Pele lunchbox. Uh, this can't be – this has got to be somewhat older. This is a retro. 1975. 
Okay. Um, the lunchbox itself, not incredibly valuable. It's probably a $20, $30 lunchbox. Uh, it's got Pele on it, but our consigner decided to get Pele to sign it. So what he did was he took a really unique vintage item, added a signature, probably a couple hundred dollars signature, and now you have about a $500 lunchbox. So he maximized his value by thinking outside the box and putting two to two together. A customer after my own heart, uh, 25 million autographs later at Snyder. Yeah. We're grateful when anybody wants to add an autograph to their products. We are big fans of that over here, by the way. Very biased, but just telling you like it is. But anyway, about five hundred dollars for this. Yeah, about five hundred. That's cool. Jess, what do we got on the phones? First off, we got a bunch of questions on the Pele box and like why people would be drawn to something so unique and in the whole auction space. Is it more about we were talking about this before, but is it more about the actual item and who signed it, or the uniqueness of the item and how rare it is? It's really more about the uniqueness of what's being signed and what what makes that rare. Um, Pele on a photo, Pele on the balls. You know, they're they're out there. You know, so they're greatest soccer things. player of all time, biggest name. I mean, we're in the top five biggest names in all of sports. I mean, tell me if you disagree. You know, tell me if there's a bigger name named Pele other than maybe Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan. I mean, those three are the biggest names, right, of yeah. all time of yeah. sports. I mean, this is not just Pele. I mean, this is the biggest soccer name. In the big and, and soccer is the biggest game in the world. I mean, tell me who's bigger than those three. Somebody tell me. Tell me. I mean, who? Who? Who's bigger than Pele, Ali, or maybe even want to throw Jordan in there? I'm sure the, I'm sure the guys are going to throw out Ronaldo and Messi, but... I Tell me! <laughs> who? We I'm got, just saying. Got a yeah. bunch of questions on people who have balls like this. All right, we got uh, balls. You've heard, that, you've heard that slogan before. And uh, yeah, we've got balls. But anyway, this is an unbelievable... I want this. I'm not going to lie. I don't have one of these... And this is an amazing autograph. This is not just a Babe Ruth ball, but this is a pristine, nice. beautiful signature. Probably about it, almost as good as you're going to get. Pretty and much. It means yeah. you're going to pay for There's it. There's probably a few out there better, but um, that's it. You can count on one hand. Maybe. I mean, you can really read that full signature. You had a beautiful signature. Now, talk to me about this ball. Um, this ball here, sweet spot, blue ink signature, those uh, definitely increase the value. Um, but what's good about this is just the presentation. So you can get a Babe Ruth ball that, a lot of Babe Ruth balls, they, they're dirty, they're faded. You're going to pay about five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for something in that range. But as you start to get better in value, it, really you can almost name your own price. And, and that's why what's good about collecting expensive items is when you get to this kind of condition, it doesn't matter what you pay because even if you're willing to overpay for something like this, you're going to be able to name your price down the down the line. Now this so. ball deserves a much better case. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the the mother load. I mean, this is the ball of all balls if you're collecting. You want to have balls. This is the ball you need to have. How much is I mean, this is on our auction or no? This one is not on our auction yet. We've just I've been we're basically tucking this away. I I've, I've been working with the owner on it. We don't the problem is the price, you know? I mean, and it's I don't know if that's a problem. It's a good problem to have, but I mean, How much a ball like this go for? A ball like this in this condition, it's really, again, it's tough to put an exact number on this because we could offer this out at 20000 immediately sell it. I would buy it in two seconds at that range. But will someone pay forty five for this? I would think so. Could someone pay 50 or 60 I would think it'd be worth it. So, again, it's, it's really tough to put an exact. That's why you go to the auction because why sell it if you really don't know genuinely what you can get for it? And a lot of times that's the benefit of the auction is take the most expensive, most valuable items out there and that's when you get the people to compete because that's cool. You don't want to give it away for less than what that's someone's going to That's a cool ball. I mean, you know, if you really want to see a real Babe Ruth ball, I mean, that's about as real and as good a signature you're going to find today. Love that ball, uh, Babe Ruth. The, the this is you know the holy grail of collecting, and just it's Babe Ruth also. I mean, there's no bigger name than Babe. Um, you know, something actually we have to go back. I mean, do you throw Babe Ruth in with Ali, <laughs> Pele? Oh boy, Jordan. I mean, did, I mean, you got to throw. I mean, you got to get Babe Ruth the props, right? I mean, he's got to be. Uh, now we're getting into a whole dilemma about that. I mean, tell me who who, who are the biggest names in in the world of sports when you talk about personalities? Hit me with that. Anyway, we're talking with Dave Averman, Jesse K. What's it worth? You got something? You want to know what it's worth? We're going to do this every week. We're going to take your calls, take your questions, bring some items on, and talk about it just for the fun of it. Also, you know, if you're out there, you're not sure what you have, 
bring it to us. We'll give you at least some ideas of what it's worth or what you have to do to find out what it's worth or how to get it authenticated. You know, those are the things we help our collectors and our customers with. If you want to sell your items, we, you know, Dave runs the auction site, which helps customers sell their items, but also he'll give you the valuations. You know, you need for insurance purposes. We do appraisals and stuff like that. So we, we, we try to help our customers that have started really collecting a lot of things for inheritance, for life insurance, for house insurance, you need appraisals, you need to know the values. We're here to help you. Uh, so please weigh in. I think questions. Ben's got Yeah, we, we got an there. interesting one here. Uh, All right, bring him on. Guy named Bud Somerville. He's got a Jesse Owens signed photo. How much would that be worth? Right. Hi, uh, Ben. How are you? Thanks for checking in with us. Cool. Um, Jesse Owens is definitely a rare autograph, no doubt about it. Um, condition's going to be important on Jesse Owens' photographs. Uh, photographs, the condition of the photo, and what kind of photograph? Um, if it's an original photograph printed around the time of the autograph, it's going to make a difference as opposed to a decade or two later. Um, we did have a Jesse Owens photograph that we sold um, about eight months ago, and I think it went just shy of a thousand dollars. But why is Jesse Owens such a hard? Is it a hard autograph to get? He's definitely a hard autograph to get. Did not sign a lot. Um, he's not in a mainstream sport. So although the Olympic Games are, are big, and obviously he's a very followed athlete. He wasn't a ball player where guys are going to the games and getting autographs and things like that. And the guys that did collect probably didn't think to collect the track and field stars and things like that at the time. So he didn't sign nearly as, as much as like a Babe Ruth would, for example. So it's, you know, it's like a thousand dollar autograph That's on a cool. flat piece. And then depending, I've seen him really skyrocket if it's just a rare, unique piece or a shirt or some shoes or things that just almost don't exist. So. You know, it's funny. We had Jim Brown in our store in Roosevelt Field last night at the Steiner store. And I was thinking, like, imagine if you had Jim Brown's lacrosse stick. When he played in Syracuse. You know, the greatest lacrosse player of all time. Imagine if you had that stick. How cool would that be? Imagine if you had his helmet when he played in Syracuse. How cool would that be? I mean, yeah. I mean this is stuff like that's why I love collecting because, you know, some of the you know, some of the things that are happening, when it's happening, you don't really see it, but then when you look back, you go, Wow, I wish I would have thought of that. Jim Brown, lacrosse, I mean, great Syracuse player in multiple sports. Before another, another uh, yeah. what it worth, what's it worth question, like another um, question just on auctions, auctions in general and items, like does the time of year make a thing vary? So when the World Series comes up, do World Series items sell better? When it's Olympic time, does Olympic items sell better? Does that have any impact? It, it has impact. Um, it depends on the tier of item you have. So if you have a lower tiered item, we'll call it under $1,000. It's gonna fluctuate a lot more during the time of year when players are on TV. If you're selling Tom Brady this Saturday afternoon when he's playing, or you know, if you're selling football when these guys are in the playoffs, absolutely. I used to collect LeBron James for years, and I always had 50 LeBron James items, game use jerseys, autographs. And I knew he was going to the finals every year. So what I would do is, I'd stock up in the off season, and then sure enough, around finals time, I'd start selling some pieces, and it was triple what it would get during the regular season. Here's LeBron so, James right now. Uh, I don't, like, what, what is a LeBron James game used jersey going for these days? Um, six figures yet? Not six figures yet, although the finals jerseys are, are approaching that range. They're more around the $50,000 range. But the thing with LeBron jerseys that you have to be leery of is Upper Deck in 0304 issued a rookie season team-issued jersey, and it's the exact same one he wore. So what collectors did is they got a hold of that. They started pulling the upper deck stickers off. They started doing some things like that, getting them uh, authenticated by other authenticators. So you'll see an influx of like 0304 LeBron jerseys and team issued. So stay away from anything team issued or anything that doesn't have like a Steiner or similar uh, type um, authentication. Because or the NBA. Now the the last 10 years, the NBA uh, right, stickers right, and yeah. stuff like that. I know my gray has... Uh, Right. The NBA auction stuff, so you look for the yeah. Migrate sticker as well. They do a good job on the game used. Yeah. We got more. Uh, Keith said he has an autographed baseball from Larson, Wells, and Cohn and their catchers who caught their perfect game. So Yogi, Girardi, and Posada, how much is that worth? I like that. But so it wasn't a lot of balls with the catchers. You know, you yes. see the three, you see the, the triple, which is a good ball, probably worth 500 bucks, maybe with the three yeah. guys. But with the catchers, probably double it. Just because it's kind of rare, there's not a lot of people that yeah, have it, right? Exactly where I would probably be at that ball there. Yeah, definitely a good idea. And what's even unique as well, some of the guys add the inscriptions or, you know, add, yeah. add a little bit more to it. The more you can add to that moment or to that piece, the, the more it's going to be a rare and the more value it's going to be. I think it's going to be harder and harder, you know, to find, uh, a per, you know, those perfect game Yankees. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, I think we saw a little bit of a, a bunch of them happen over the last couple of years, but I don't see that. I You know, that was a little run on perfect games, but no hitters, but I don't see it happening again. But there's nothing like Don Larson's perfect game. 
you know, it's kind of like Clyde Frazier's Game 7, triple-double. To me, the greatest basketball game played by a player. My favorite Nick, the greatest Nick of all time, Clyde Frazier. He doesn't get the props, but tri- a triple-double? Did I say triple crown? I meant triple-double. I mean, hello, Willis Reed, the center on the sidelines. The man took over and won a championship. He does not get the props enough for that. But... Don Larson, a perfect game in the World Series, and it wasn't playing a light team either. That Dodger team was locked and loaded. There'll never be another game like that. You're not going to see a perfect game in the World Series. No way. That's a team on top of their game? Are you kidding me? Like, I think not enough props, not enough attention paid to those kinds of things. You know, that, that will never be done again. You're never going to see uh, a guard like, like, I mean, that's just unbelievable. Triple double, game seven, Lakers. Wow. I wasn't around for A couple that. more? Yeah, Mike Joseph wants to know what an Angus Young signed guitar would go for. <laughs> that's <laughs> random. Yeah, that's yeah. extremely random out there. I mean, it's really, again, what type of guitar? Are we talking about a $200 guitar or a $1,000 guitar? That's the first question you got to ask. You know, I'd be the first one to have to admit Angus Young's probably not going to add yeah, that a lot much of value. value. Well, unless it's... A, uh, unless it's Something used in a concert. Or yeah, right, it. of course, if, if you can yeah. relay that or figure that out. But, you know, I mean, I would think that it's just a regular Angus Young, let's say it's a Stratocast or something like that, you got like a three $400 guitar. You know yeah. I mean? You know, but if you have a Gibson Les Paul, you know, it might be, it might be a little bit more. A couple more. Uh, if you participate, the more information you give us, the more we can give you back. And, by the way, you can send these to us all week long, as long as you want, because we'll pick up the pace next week. We're going to do this every week, 15, 20 minutes, rattle off what's it worth, help you with some of the things you may have that you're not sure about, and give you some guidance of not only how much it's worth, but maybe where to get something authenticated, where you can sell it. You know, Dave runs the auction platforms. He always has some good ideas how to package something up. You may not have what you need to make a lot of money, but packaged in with something else, sometimes you can. A um, signed Rogers jersey with multiple inscriptions on it. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Oh, authentic oh, jersey? Yeah. That's what it says. A signed, authentic Aaron Rodgers jersey with multiple inscriptions. Great player, MVP player, one of Steiner's players. So, you know, we love Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but what do you think? Well, the inscriptions is what really separates yeah. that. Is it, are they unusual inscriptions? Are they unusual? How many? What's the overall display? I'm going to just guess that it's probably about four or five inscriptions fitting in a number of some sort. But because of the rarity and the fact that you can't really find those, you know, you're going to be well north of $1,000 on a piece like that, even in an auction uh, yeah. environment, for sure. And by the way, when you have these questions, you want to take a picture of your item or really get into a little more detail, it helps us. But Aaron Rodgers is a highway collectible guy, has not signed a lot in his entire oh, wow. career, and he's playing for a storied franchise, which does play a role. Yeah. When you play for a team like the Packers, the Bears, the Giants, those are franchises that – Add to the element of collecting. The fan bases are deeper, they're richer, uh, there's more story, history to them, and it adds to the collectability of the item. And hence, we have an Aaron Rodgers. We can add this one to the uh, the category of a little bit weird and a little interesting. <laughs> we like weird and interesting. Um, Bring in weird and interesting. Bring it. That we want yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, uh, Brian Kuhn, he, when he grew up, his aunt and uncle were friends with the owners of the Texas Rangers, um, and they got him... Uh, Gaylord Perry's autograph jock strap. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the know. stuff we're not getting involved <laughs> with. And, you know, some that's just you know. It's a matter of what someone's willing to pay yeah, for. If you're right, not going to yeah, want it yeah. yourself, then you're not going to pay. But for uh, that. that's, that's interesting that you actually wanted that item and they actually <laughs> gave that to you. But I'm not sure that that's going to carry any credence. That's the stuff we stay away from on our auctions, and you know, we try to keep everything kind of on the up and up, and. You know, as far as in good taste and good flavor. Here's a here's a good question from Jay Gatsby. He asked, uh, "Is Mears the only place that he could send game used items to have authenticated?" I, I don't think so. I mean, Dave, what's your what's your take? I mean, there's a bunch of people that do a good job. I mean, one of them we mentioned earlier was Migrate does a good job. Yes, my, so, you know, that, my that, they do a nice job. No, that's a, that's a great question, actually, because that is a lot of collectors' uh, struggles right now. I think because you know they they feel like it's a monopoly when it comes to that, but it's really it's not actually. Um, Mears has definitely been around the longest, and everyone trusts them. Um, but you know the turnaround time is a little slow. I'll be honest, you know I think all our collectors can probably agree to that. 100% authentic out of Las Vegas. Uh, they used to run mem- American memorabilia. Their pricing is great, and they do a good job. You they like them? Who runs that? Uh, that's uh, Victor Moreno and uh, Kita as well. How about they- JSA? What do you think about that? JSA doesn't more do autographs, the, not gaming. Yeah, they're all the autographs. Um, but you do have. Um, 
photo matching now is big. So migrate, but migrate is only gonna if they can't photo match it, you're they're not gonna be able to authenticate. So I think you'll find with a migrate type or a photo matching company, more often than not, you'll be sending them things and they'll just say I can't do it because unless they can actually match it with the photos, they might not have enough photos of the games, even in the 90s and 80s, so they won't even be able to do it. So if they can There's do it. There's nothing better than the photo matching process. It's really the future of game used, and the faster we get that into play with photos that match the game used that you're buying, uh, it's probably going to be the safest avenue to maybe take game used into a much better place than it is now because, Definitely. you know, there's always a lot of question marks. And there's a lot of weird things that happened, you know, back in the day. Really, sometimes it's sketchy and sometimes it just isn't. Just just no way to match. There's just nothing to substantiate what you right. have. So you like mirrors. You like my gray. You like... Uh, 100% authentic. Right, and then you do have, there's a few others. Real Game Used is another one. Um, they're out in uh, Arizona, and they do a great job yep. as well. And then you also have another photo matching company right now as well, Photo Matching and Grading, and the owner of Gray Flannel actually uh, is one of the authenticators. It's his company. Uh, so they're called photo matching and grading. And cool. they will, and they, if they don't photo match, they'll grade it as well. And they, they're very knowledgeable. They know their stuff. They've been doing this for 30, 40 years. So there's options. A couple more questions. By the way, we're going to get to this. Another gem here. If you uh, can put the camera in there. <laughs> another holy grail item. Honus Wagner. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then, um, yeah. So Garen had two questions. First, a Mantle Williams DiMaggio signed ball. And then a Mantle Williams DiMaggio and Frank, uh, Frank Robinson, Robinson signed ball. Triple crown. You know, you got to be careful on that. Those those items. A lot of those items were done at a time, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this. But, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. That's a JSA play. You can bring that to Jimmy Spence. He can authenticate that. I think you have to get that independently authenticated. But that also, a lot of those triple crown items were done at a time when there were a couple of bad people in the business, and you got to double check it. But let's assume that it's real. Love to see a picture of it, by the way. And you should go to JSA and get it authenticated. But um, yeah, anything you want to add to that? Because those are great items, but there's a bunch of bad ones out there. There's definitely a bunch of bad ones, and there was there were signings of these, so they're they're out there. They're not incredibly rare, so that definitely yeah. will, will not as valuable as you think. Right. But also, it's a really nice item to have. Great items. If the ball is bright white, you know you may have a thousand dollar baseball. If there's some toning, it's probably like seven fifty. It's really not. You're not looking at a few thousand. Now, these balls back in the mid-90s when signed lithographs of Joe DiMaggio going for $1,500, you know, and now, you know, they might go for 300 It's a different market. So I think the autograph on the baseball right there since the 90s when these guys it's, signed. It's Williams, DiMaggio, Mantle, and Frank, right? Yep. Oh, you got I mean, all four. Okay, that's a yeah, little. That's one a had little. three, one had four. I mean, the, the ball had Mantle, DiMaggio. He has two, one with three of them, and then one with Frank Robinson also right, on it. But one was, the three was Mantle, DiMaggio, and... Mantle, De, uh, Mantle Williams, and DiMaggio. I mean, that, that's a $2,000 ball. Good, yeah, that yeah. one's, yeah, I didn't know DiMaggio. And the other one's Mantle, yeah. Williams, DiMaggio, and Frank Robinson. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both in a $2,000 range, assuming the autographs are clean on the, and the ball's in good shape. Unfortunately, there's a lot of them, so you may it may not be an easy peasy getting the two thousand. To be honest with you, you know, but fifteen hundred a lot easier to get, yeah. and you're gonna have to go invest a hundred bucks to get it authenticated because there's some bad stuff mixed in in that whole group of all that being done. But the three of those guys used to do shows. Me being I've, I've the the pleasure and the blessing of being at a couple of those, uh, you know, where I was able to walk up to a mantle, the I was doing signs with with mantle. So that was kind of a, a cool thing. The signs I did with Joe D, I'm not going to get into now because they weren't, they didn't go well, and he was not a fun, easy guy to deal with, to be honest with you. But Mantha was a gem, and Frank is still a guy we have to this day. And Ted Williams was a guy. We were the last major distributor for John Henry. We distributed Ted Williams' stuff uh, the last three, four years he was alive. We had the blessing of working with Ted, uh, meeting with him a bunch of times, and super guy, and and was committed to the signing. He wasn't. His health wasn't great at the end, so it, it was something that he did uh, probably sign a lot more. You know, Joe D was signing everything and packing stuff away, and he was very methodical about what he was going to leave and who he was leaving it for and who he was signing for and making sure nobody was getting paid more than him and wasn't the friendliest cat. But Williams was a great guy about it all, great, nice, long signature, um, and – was was fun doing that stuff. We did some fun stuff with Ted at the end. Mickey, there was nobody who cared more about the autograph than Mickey. You know, Mickey would sign something and come out right immediately and say, you got to go get another thing and I'll sign it for you better. Actually felt bad. 
He was an inscription guy. I really feel he's the forefather of our business. He's the one who really elevated and propelled this business and, and definitely helped make it into what it is now because his autograph was uh, meaningful. Uh, he was extremely popular, and he took a lot of pride in his autograph and playing around with the inscriptions and all that stuff. You see great mantle inscriptions. And his oh, fan base has not wavered. Not There's really nothing sure. like a Mickey. I'm almost comparable or on its way to being a Babe Ruth kind of fan base. He is that kind of fan fan, right? Just going to say the exact same thing, actually, when I was thinking about that. Derek Jeter-like, yeah. um, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, just, you know, real, real, um, you know, just... And uh, I got I got to you know have a lot of great stories of spending some time with Mickey, which I know, as a little kid, and then you know, this was 25 years ago, but to spend time with Mickey, lunches, fight nights, and uh, I thank Bill Lederman at Mickey Mantle for getting that relationship and, and, and making that happen. We have a couple of uh, if you want to do a couple rapid fire, we've like we'll five do a couple or rapid six. fires for Dave. Go ahead. So Roger Staubach autographed Navy full size helmet. That's about a five hundred dollar helmet. By the way, you know we're the first company to break Roger into the autograph business. That's, that's one of your favorite. Ran, ran Roger. Roger. was my idol growing up. Love Roger. I mean, he's such a class act. And we got him doing stuff. He was like, Brandon, I don't know how you got me doing this. Huh. You know, doing card shows for the Heisman in New Jersey. And we were running him around the country a little bit. Great guy. Very successful in every aspect of his life. Maybe one of the great all-around people when you look at what he's done for our military, what he's done for college, the Navy, what he's done for the Cowboys, what he's done as a businessman. Very few people who's had that kind of impact on as many people as he has. Uh, I think a guy worth collecting. And uh, 500 is should be more. In 86, uh, Mets team signed with Gary Carter. Those uh, ones are a premium. Those ones are a bit of a premium. You know, it's it's probably, realistically, it's about a $750 to $1,000 ball with Carter on the, on the 86 Mets ball. And then uh, Mears authenticated game used Kobe Bryant sneakers from 2011. You love those sneakers, Dave. Kobe sneakers have gotten crazy right now. I mean, Kobe. Uh, I wish I didn't wear all my Kobe's. Oh, you could have got Kobe game used sneakers three years ago for a thousand, twelve hundred if you looked hard enough. But now, uh, first, I'd recommend if you have Mears authenticated Kobe sneakers, try to find the game you wore them. Try to match them a little. Try to get that photo match because the Mears authenticated Kobe sneakers. That's great, but you're going to be in that two to twenty five hundred dollar range. Or send us a picture of those Kobe so we yeah. can dig into that and we can anybody who's watching we can actually because the sneaker thing is crazy. I, I have people bounce things off me all day. I have people that, honestly, I have still yet to do any business with, and then they'll say, hey, what is this Garagordo? Does this look good? Does that? So I, it's fine. I have no problem helping out or even trying to photo match some things with some people. That's what we're here for. We want to increase the value of the collectible, or at least explain to you how to do that, because if you can't do that, then you, the next guy is going to get it from you and do the same thing. So you got to be in, in front of that stuff. So if you get a nice photo match on a Kobe sneaker, though, now you're in the $5,000, $7,500 range. So it's a big difference, and it's well worth a few hours of your time to look around at pictures of Kobe online. It's not the worst thing in the world. We're going to post your email right below, uh, dammerman at steinersports.com. You have a question, you need something, you want to sell some of your stuff, or you're looking for something really cool and proprietary, hit your man. And uh, you got Ethan Reyes downstairs also with a whole team of about 10 people on our auction platform. Love to help you. Love to answer your questions. We're going to do this once a week. You got questions, take a picture, send it in. Happy to help you. We'll get you on the phone. This is our first week doing it. Not bad. We'll close on this note. Dave, tell us about this. Right. Honus Wagner Ball. And every week we'll bring some cool items because when you go on our auction platform, it's insane the depth and width of some of the coolness. If you're looking for something really special, that's the place to go. You go on SteinerSports.com auction, and you'll see the most rarest, unusual things. So when you walk in and give somebody a gift, they have no idea where you got that from. And we're doing the work to make sure this stuff's real and where it comes from, the history of it. But tell us about, in closing this, this show, right. what's up with this ball? Okay. Because it's beautiful. I'm Another glad you beauty. saved that beautiful. one for last because this might honestly change the market a little bit because I don't think... People really know there's a Wagner this nice, actually. And this is another one that's in the safe, and we're just waiting right now. Um, I think this is the, the nicest condition Honus Wagner single sign bowl out there. It, it is bold, and there's not a break. There's not a fade. There's nothing wrong with the signature there. The bowl is clean as well, top to bottom. It's really hard to put a price. I've seen Honus Wagner single sign balls go for around $30,000 in similar condition, but if you put this as number one, Wow. Wow, 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 wow. On that note, we'll see you next week. We got some lives coming up with some guests. 
th things are just picking up. So keep it. Listen, thanks for supporting the lives. We appreciate it. We've got some really cool stuff coming up next week. Some great guests, a couple players, a couple celebrities, Yankee manager, Aaron Boone coming up at the end of the month, right here in studio. We got it going on. Thanks for joining us. You got a what's it worth question? Bring it in. Look for Dave's contacts. It's right below. If you have any questions, you can shoot him an email. He's happy to help you. And thank you for your support. We love you. Thank you. Have a great day.